Now, on Thursday, Prince Charles, who won't be going to the pictures this week after all, will open the Museum of the Moving Image, Mommy, to its friends on London's South Bank. On Friday, everyone else, including, if he so wishes, Buster Edwards, can go. He could even invite his old friend Slipper, because I think they'd both enjoy it. Mommy, which is right next door to the National Film Theatre, claims to be unique, both in its size and its scope. A museum that traces the story of film and television from the pre-film days of Chinese shadow plays to the satellite TV technology of tomorrow, taking in en route such oddities as Charlie Chaplin's hat and boots and a sofa shaped like Mae West's lips. When I went there last week, people were still scurrying around to get everything finished before the royal visitation. This is an underground car park under Waterloo Bridge, or rather, that's what it used to be. Now it is, or at least it will be when it's finished, the Temple of the Gods, a tribute to the silent era of the cinema, to stars like Lillian Gish and Buster Keaton, Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, Theda Barra, and a rather paunchy Rudolf Valentino. One of the nice things about this museum is that you don't just wander around with a catalogue in your hand. The most unexpected people suddenly turn up and buttonhole you and start telling you what's going on. Comrade! See what I mean? To see you, comrade! Workers of the world unite, comrade! comrade. On this train, we have films. The films of Eisenstein, Vertov, Kulishov. None of the bourgeois screenplay fairy tales you may have seen, comrade, of Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks. Oh, that no, Hollywood comrade. rubbish. None of that. Fresh capitalism, comrade. Come and see for yourself. I can hardly wait. Inside this rather colourful Russian agitprop train, you can join fellow comrades for some early Soviet films. It's in ways like this that the museum really excels. A great deal of time and effort have gone into bringing the history of film alive. It doesn't just stop with Russian propaganda trains. Every major chapter of filmmaking is set in its own period. When you think of the movies, you think of Hollywood, and probably Hollywood in the golden age of the 1930s. So here it is, Mommy's Hollywood exhibit, celebrating Tinseltown, circa 1938. I'm just about to be shown around here by that very well-known American director... Uh, what, what, what was your name again? Joe Polero. Joe? Joe Polero. It'll never catch on. Steven Spielberg, that'll catch on. Joe Polero, never. Joe, tell me, what is it you're about to do uh, here? Can we get some setup down here, Thanks George, bunch, please? Joe. Thank you. And can I please have some proper light and swimming around in half darkness down here? I'm telling you. What do you mean, what scene is next, George? Don't you ever consult your call sheet? Oh, you, Joe, I'd fire that, George. Now, this lady is False Maria from Fritz Lang's Metropolis. And I want you to know that we're just good friends. Though I don't suppose that lot believes a word of it. But this museum doesn't only deal with the movies, television also gets a look in. And over in this corner, one of the television exhibits is putting on the final touches for his screen tests for I2 and my museum piece here. The idea is that you can come along and be taped being interviewed by me, and this is how it works. Let me start by asking you what your favourite TV programmes are, apart from mine, of course. Now you answer my question and then both our recordings are electronically mixed together and eventually played back for you to see. If Hollywood decided to make a film about your life, which star, living or dead, would you cast as yourself? Good question, that. Who would you pick? Well, thank you very much indeed. I really enjoyed talking to you. Next week I'll be talking to Marlon Brando, Frank Sinatra, Elizabeth Taylor, Meryl Streep and lots of other lesser stars than yourself. So until then, goodbye. Here you find me sitting in Mae West's mouth, an unusual experience, for me anyway. Actually, this sofa was designed by Salvador Dali, and it's a good example of the quirkier aspects of Mommy. As you go around, you have no clear idea of what you're going to encounter next. What I can tell you, though, is that when you've done the grand tour, and it takes some time, you'll have learned a great deal about the development of the film and television industries and how they interact with each other. And in the meantime, you'll have had quite a lot of fun. I don't think a museum can offer much more than that. A word of warning, ladies and gents. If you stand on a threshold of Monsieur Robertson's phantasmagoria, where ghosts, ghouls, and spectres dwell, and black magic is rife. So, keep your smelling salts handy and enter at your peril. Well worth a visit that, if only for the sheer delight of being interviewed by me. And do remember, when I asked the question, if you were the controller of BBC One, what changes would you make? The only permissible answer is put Film 88 on earlier.